What's good YouTube? We have a first place deck profile for you today. Rodney Hartwell used Galaxy Brilliant ABC to decimate his opponents. He had some very hot tech in it as well, but let's go ahead and get into his tournament report, some cool plays he did, and then we'll get into the deck list. Uh, the deck list will be up here the whole time for you guys anyways to look through, but I'll, I'll talk about some of the choices and my opinions on them after. All right, there were 355 participants in nine rounds, according to him. I had been told 344, so maybe there were some late entries. Round one, Burning Abyss Dark World. That's that's a first round deck you play against, and he won against it. Round two, True Draco Demise. It was a tie, so on the back burner early. Round three, Dark Magician, and it was a win. Round four, he faced the Pendulum Magicians, one. Round five, Mermels, and one. And the next few rounds might all sound familiar. Round six, Pendulum Magicians, one. Round seven, Pendulum Magicians, one. Round eight, Pendulum Magicians, one. And round nine, we know it was Philosa Joey. Round nine, Pendulum Magicians, he managed to take the W against him as well. Out of all the decks, Dark Magician caught me most by surprise. The new fusion is busted if he hits the field. With a decent amount of back row, the game can be over relatively soon. He also wants to shout out Team Sauce, Firefly Toys and Games, and all the friends that motivated it and believed in me. Ooh, that's, that's a pretty awesome message there. So I asked him, hey, do you have any plays that stuck out through the day? A lot of people don't know how to continue playing this deck under Master Rule 4. I'd rather it be from your mouth than mine. He said, people will be curious about no anti-spell or imperial order. I'd rather draw into my side deck cards that I don't have to wait a turn to play, and this definitely went in my favor, especially going second. Me and the Mermail player had close games. In game three, he had a Megalo with two attacks, Mulan Glacia, and Dragoons. All I had was C and the field spell with two A's in hand. I swung my C, specialed A, attached another uh, C, he swung, used C's effect again, and I had two A's to save me from the Megalo attacks. I came back with Buster and overwhelmed him for the win. In the last round, in game three, I got Reapered and had no Busters for game. Infinity was God tier, lol. He says that in camps. He held it down and I used ABC pieces to continuously provide him protection and push for extra damage. Really good duels. So a lot of people might not remember that these can equip to more than just A, B, and C. You can target a light machine monster you control. So basically you can give Infinity even more protection. Now I do want to state that if you haven't looked up combos, there are many combos in order to get out Decode Talker with a buster not having to rely on gofu just having hanger gadget and a piece well the piece gets searched by hanger but basically hanger gadget can end up with buster alongside the code talker if you're doing it right you might want to go look up those combos on youtube or ask a, an abc group how you do that 3A Assault Cores, 3B Buster Drakes, 3C Crush Weavers, the Spicy Electromagnetic Turtle. If you don't know what Turtle does, during your opponent's battle phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard. In the battle phase, this is a quick effect. You can only use this effect once per turn. We've got three Galaxy Soldiers holding it down. Do remember this comes out in defense. I see more and more people testing this deck out, trying it out, and they often bring it out in attack mode when it's special summoned by its own effect. Remember, it's mandatorily to defense position here. Stop chatting, you guys. We've got two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits here, two Gold Gadgets, two Silver Gadgets, and we get into our brilliant targets with Perform Age, Trick Clown, and Garnet. Another light level four target to send with a Brilliant Fusion. But the really cool thing about Brilliant Fusion in this deck, besides just its additional normal, which is broken with hanger, if, if you have, you know, two different pieces, you basically turn Buster on and you get your Decode Talker. 
It actually can send any of your pieces to the graveyard that you might be missing in the scenarios. So you're able to actually, with Brilliant Fusion, just send, let's say you have an A in hand, you can send a C, and you have Hanger that has searched A or B. You're able to summon A, equip B, and then make your buster basically from there. It's pretty dang cool. If you're, if you're, you know, it allows you to get all your pieces really, really easily. We've got three Cosmic Cyclones, three Terraformings, three Union Hangers, so six ways to get to Hanger. Two Desires. I really like the two option in this deck. A, because you don't want to banish your pieces. B, because if you're activating one, you don't want to draw into that extra one, which seems to happen even when you just play two. And for the extra deck thinning, we got that young Upstart Goblin. We're playing 39. I think it's been a while since I've seen that. And Transmodify because we are playing the Galaxy Soldier variant here. I think Rodney definitely did a great job deck building here. And the traps interest me because it's Solemn Warning and two Solemn Strikes. I, I feel like I would have expected Floodgate Trap Hole here instead of the old Tired and True Solemn. Uh, not the full squad, but the, the these three Solemn cards. I, I feel like Floodgate is what I would have leaned towards, but obviously he's tested the deck through and through. Being able to take care of a Pendulum Summon at times can be so huge, and then they're not able to stall, uh, stall through with all the things that they summoned out. So maybe use Warning and Strike just were much better against the Pendulum matchup. Now here's a card I haven't seen in ages. Chaos Hunter. When your opponent special summons a monster, you can discard one card, special summon this card from your hand. Your opponent cannot banish cards. Does that, does that sound good against anything in the mirror match? Because it basically holds off Buster until it's dealt with. They also can't summon another Buster because you need to banish the three. So it basically shuts off both the Buster's effects in the mirror match for your opponent only but it's also actually pretty good against cosmo if you remember the cosmo format a lot of people would side chaos hunter so it actually helps handle multiple matchups that might appear in the regional level events then we have two kaijus and gamma seal one maxi and then another very very spicy card and deck lockdown neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them first up so you basically shut off Pendulum Magicians using Skull Crobat Joker, Pendulum Call, and many other things. Oh, also he said, uh, it was, he just messaged me again, it was 344 players, so Philosophy Joey was right there. There was no extra people. We'll have that uh, reflect in the title. But then it's secondary effect. Monsters cannot be special summoned from the main deck. So it shuts off the main deck in two places, and you're able to play it if you're going first. You're able to play it after doing everything. Like he mentioned, he wanted cards he could play immediately rather than having to wait a turn to affect his opponent. And this seems to be one of those cards that really worked out well for him. We've actually seen this price jump really high during Necros format, and it impacted the 150th YCS. We have Dark Hole, Regeki, three system downs for the young mirror match. It looks like he, I, I feel like whenever you're really good with the deck, whenever you really know what you're doing, you, you tend to over prepare for the mirror match. And it really seems like he, he did that here. And, and it has the added bonus of hitting Cosmos and desk bots. Remember how desk bots just got curb stomped because ABC was a thing? That, that happens. But two twin twisters, realistically, by the way, I don't think desk bots are a threat to the format. I know that's going to anger somebody in the comment section down below. We got three ABC Dragon Buster, one Gym Knight, Seraphonite, Knight, the Bujente Tsukiyomi. Do remember that basically every single card in this deck that's not named Garnet is a light, and the only ones you can't really overlay for are these. So like everything works to help you make your Bujente Tsukiyomi in the deck. We've got Castell, we've got the Cyber Dragon Infinity Package, which has multiple ways to, to go up into that soldier thanks to this transmodify. We've got Diamond Direwolf, and I'm going to shout this out from now on with this deck, because this is the only deck that I think under Master Rule 4 is realistically doing this. Every time you've used a Castell already, and you've then summoned a Diamond Dire, such as to take care of back row, remember that you can pop your Castell with your Diamond Dire's effect, because you can also do Wing Beast. I feel like this is the only deck where that scenario is going to come up under Master Rule 4 
currently, but remember that that's a play. We got Gear Gigant X, which helps you tutor out the, uh, faster through your deck to get to your other ABC Reese's pieces. We've got the Utopia package here, a Tornado Dragon, Decode Talker, and Proxy Dragon. So again, huge shout outs to Rodney taking a big first place at a 344 person regional with the ABC before Destrudo is released this week. We might see the entire face of ABC just change this week, but he came in to a format where people realistically were going Pendulum Magician crazy without Anti-Spell, without Imperial Order, and took this one down very, very strongly. So I, I can't emphasize enough, this, this is kind of crazy for the transitional format. A lot of people thought this would be really strong at the beginning of the format. It's had a lackluster showing, so it's really awesome to see it get first place. Thanks for watching, guys, and I made a new Halloween banner. If you didn't notice on the channel, go check that out as well on the main page. It looks even better on a browser, I promise.